Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem reconstruct itinerary. This is a pretty difficult problem, but it's doable if you have a good understanding of graphs and graph traversals, especially DFS, which we're gonna be using in this problem. But we're given a list of airline tickets and these tickets are basically a graph edge. We have a from and a to, so basically a source and a destination and it connects two nodes together. In this case, the nodes are gonna represent airports or cities. And basically using this list of tickets, we wanna reconstruct the itinerary. And basically what that means is we wanna reconstruct the flight history of a person who had this list of tickets. All of the tickets belong to someone who departed from JFK. So no matter what, this is gonna be our starting edge in our graph. So basically, if you take a look at this picture, we're always gonna be starting at JFK. So we're pretty much guaranteed that JFK is going to be a node in our graph. They also tell us that we can assume all tickets form at least one valid itinerary. So basically we're guaranteed that there is a solution and in the solution that we create, we have to use every single ticket exactly once. And there's one last thing that they tell us. There could be multiple solutions. And if there are multiple solutions, we want to return the one that has a smaller lexical order, basically the one that comes first in sorted order. And you can't really tell that from this example because there's really only one solution, but let's take a look at another. So here we have a different graph. Let's say, you know, A was JFK in, in this context. I'm just using ABC to keep it simple. But we're starting at A, we could, uh, you know, we wanna go over every single edge, basically. Each edge represents a ticket. We wanna go over every single edge and we want the history of the destinations to be our result. So, you know, let's say we're creating our result. A is gonna be first. And then, you know, what we could do is we could say, okay, let's visit uh, C first, right? We get to C and then we go back to A, right, from C. So, you know, what we could say is, okay, we first go to A, then go to C, then go back to to A and then we go to B and then we go back to A from B and then that would leave our result looking something like this. That's one possible solution. But the other solution would have been to go to B first and then go to C. What that would have looked like is A, B, A, C, A. Now, which one of these has a smaller lexical order? Which one of these comes first in sorted order? Well, the first character A is the same, but the second character could be B or C. Which one of these comes first? B comes first. So of course, of these two, we would prefer the second one. We would return the second order as our result. So that's something to keep in mind. And the way we can actually handle this is gonna be pretty easy. I'll show you how we can you know, make sure that we return the, the smaller lexical order result. Now, this example is very simple because there's really only one you know ordering that we could possibly create and to get that ordering what we could do is just run DFS starting at JFK we know we're always going to start at JFK we create a DFS running on this and you know using this DFS technically we are allowed to visit multiple the, you know the same node multiple times as I showed in the example just a moment ago but what we can't do is go over the same edge multiple times we can't reuse one of our tickets but in this case if we run a DFS starting at JFK, you know, what we'll get is JFK first, then this one, then this one, then this one, and then this one. So there's really only one ordering and you can see that that's the output for this example, the expected output. And so that's what we can return. But if we of course had multiple choices like this, or, you know, adding a bunch more edges and we still have to go over every single edge and we have to return the smallest lexical order, you know, let's see how we can do that algorithm. So like I mentioned, you really have to have a good understanding of graphs to be able to solve this problem. I'm gonna assume you kind of already know DFS and the basics of graphs. So what we're gonna use to do the traversal on this graph in the first place is, you know, create an adjacency list. Of course, we're already given the list of edges, but we have to actually create an adjacency list out of that to be able to traverse over the graph. And the way we're gonna be you know, creating this adjacency list is just gonna be by using a hash map. We're gonna map every single node to the, you know, every single source rather, to the possible destinations that we can take. And the easiest way to build an adjacency list is just kind of iterate over the input, which is tickets in this case, right? It's a list of source destination pairs. So what we would do is say, okay, JFK has uh, San Francisco SFO, 
At least I assume that's San Francisco. Uh, and then uh, it also has a second one, Atlanta, ATL. And we can start adding those to our adjacency list. Like this is the list, this is the source, right? So from JFK, we can travel to these two cities. But what I'm gonna tell you right now is that we should have this list in sorted order because we're gonna be running DFS and as we run DFS, we're going to start at the first possible source that we could visit from JFK, right? We're going to try SFO and maybe we find a result starting at SFO. In that case, we could return that as the result. But what if it turned out that maybe we could have also found a result, uh, you know, going to Atlanta first rather than SFO? In that case, this is the result that we would prefer because it comes first in sorted order. So what we want is for each of these lists to be in sorted order. And we could build the adjacency list and then sort each of these lists independently. But the easier way to do it is actually just to sort the input. And I'll show you why, because the way we're gonna be sorting the input is by doing this. These are pairs of values, right? The first uh, value is gonna be the first key that we're gonna use to sort. So, you know, these two JFKs would be next to each other. But then if there's a tie between the first value, then we wanna use the second value as our sorting keys. So among these two, which is going to come first SFO or ATL of course ATL because it comes first you know that's just something to keep in mind so if we have this in sorted order then our adjacency list will be sorted by default right and I'm actually going to build this adjacency list now assuming that this thing is in sorted order or at least I'm going to be going through the sorted order version of this uh, list of tickets so first is going to be ATL and it has JFK as one of its destinations so let's do that and ATL also has SFO as one of its destinations so let's add that next we have JFK it has Atlanta as one of its destinations and it also has SFO as one of its destinations and then lastly we have SFO which only has one destination which is ATL so let's add that so now we're gonna start running our DFS so let's focus on the picture now. So we're gonna be starting at JFK. You know, we have two outgoing edges from JFK. We could go to SFO or we could go to ATL. Which one are we gonna decide? Well, we're gonna look at our adjacency list and see which one comes first. Well, ATL comes first, so let's visit ATL. So we're gonna go along this edge and now we're gonna be at ATL. And when we do that, we're actually gonna remove ATL from our adjacency list, at least temporarily for now. And by the way, as we you know go along this, we're also gonna be building our result. Our result is just gonna be you know the travel history of these airports. We know initially we start at JFK and right now we just visited ATL, so that's gonna come next. Okay, now from ATL, we have two outgoing edges. We could go to SFO or we could go to JFK. Which one are we gonna decide? Well, let's see which one comes first in sorted order. It's JFK. So let's go to JFK next. So we're going back to JFK. So we visited both of these two edges and let's remove JFK as, an, uh, as a destination from Atlanta. And in our result, now let's add JFK again because we started at JFK, then we went to Atlanta, then we're back at JFK. Now from JFK, we only have one outgoing edge remaining, SFO, and that you can tell from our adjacency list as well. So let's pop SFO. Now we're at SFO, let's add that to our result as well. Now from SFO, we only have one destination. It makes things easy for us. That's Atlanta, so let's pop Atlanta from here. Let's go along that edge and let's add ATL to our result. And from ATL now, we only have another, a single edge outgoing, it's to SFO. So let's pop SFO, travel along that edge and add SFO to our result. So this was a valid way because we just visited every single edge. How exactly do we know we visited every single edge though? Well, our result is gonna be keeping track of all of the nodes that we visited in our graph, right? Not the edges. We know every time we visit one of the edges, we're gonna be adding another node to our result. And we know that we actually initially start with a single node, which is JFK, before we even travel along any edges, right? We start at JFK. So basically we know we are finished when the length of our result array is equal. So I'll write it out, is equal to the length of our tickets plus one. So down here you can see 
when length of result is equal to length of tickets plus one, that's how we know that we are done. The plus one comes from the fact that we already start with a single uh, node in our result array, and then every other node comes from traveling along one of the edges in our graph. So that's the main idea. Now in this example, it was kind of simple for us because the first you know solution ended up working, the first path that we tried ended up working, but if it didn't, suppose we actually had a graph that looked like this one, and let's say we started at the A node. In this case, we have two choices of where we could go. We could go to C first or we could go to B first. We're going to choose B because it comes first in lexical order compared to C. So we travel along this edge and we end up visiting the B. Okay, well now we're stuck here. There's no outgoing edges from B. We can't even get back to A. So what we found is we tried to be greedy. We tried to take the first character that came, right? The, the first, the alphabetical character, but it didn't work out for us. So we end up backtracking. We say, okay, we're actually not gonna travel along this edge, at least just yet. We're actually gonna travel to the C first, even though it comes after in order compared to the B, just because we know that at least here, we might be able to create a valid path. So we go to C, then we go back to A, and then we go to B. So basically what we realized from this example is that sometimes in some of the cases, we're going to have to backtrack. So we might go along an edge and realize that it doesn't work. And then we're going to have to reverse our decision and then travel along a different edge. So that's something we're going to have to keep in mind. Let's actually jump into the code in a second. And stay tuned because it's actually going to be pretty tricky. But let's discuss the time complexity of this solution. And since I mentioned we are going to be doing some form of backtracking, the overall time complexity to run a DFS on the entire graph, in the worst case, it would be like a V plus E, right? Basically the size of the graph. But since we are backtracking, potentially for every single edge that exists in the graph, the overall time complexity is going to be, you know, the size of the graph squared. And, you know, since we know that the number of edges is actually actually going to be, you know, approximately the same or greater than the number of vertices, we can actually think of this as pretty much being E squared as the time complexity. And as the uh, memory complexity, we can consider it to be big O of the number of edges, one, because we're going to be storing it in our adjacency list. And when we do the function recursively, this could be the size of the call stack in the worst case. So this is the time complexity. This is the memory complexity. Now let's code it up. Okay, so let's code it up. We are going to first create our adjacency list. We are going to map every single source node to an empty list initially. So let's go through every single source destination in our input, which is tickets and just map the source to an empty list for now. And then let's actually build the adjacency list. So let's go through every source destination in our tickets and then say for this source, we want to append to it this destination. And that's really all the pre-work that we have to do. Now we actually get into our DFS where we are gonna be passing in some source node and then running DFS on it, seeing if we can actually find a valid path and then updating our result accordingly, right? Our result is basically going to be that path that we found that is valid and in lexical order. Now we know that we have a starting point in our result initially, we start at JFK. And we actually don't have to pass this variable into our DFS because our DFS is declared inside of the outer function. Uh, but now for the base case of this DFS, one is that we find our solution. How do we know if we find our solution again? Well, if the length of the result is exactly equal to the length of the tickets plus one. And in that case, we're gonna return true, saying that we did find a valid path. Now, one of the cases where we can't find a valid path is if the this source that we're at is not actually in our adjacency list. What that means is that this source does not have any outgoing edges from it. In that case, we can go ahead and return false. That means we can't find a valid path. Okay, so now what we want to do is actually iterate through all of the neighbors of our current uh, source node, right? So for this source node, we're gonna go through all of the adjacent neighbors and let's actually call it V. So for the input that we we're given this source, we wanna go through all of its neighbors. We're gonna call that neighbor the V and we actually wanna enumerate over this. And basically what enumerate is gonna do for us is gonna allow us to iterate over the index at the same time as the actual uh, value, which is the vertex. But what you're about to see is actually we're going to be modifying the adjacency list as we iterate through it, right? Because if we visit this V uh, vertex, this node, then we want to remove it. We want to remove the ith index from the adjacency list currently, but we can't really 
you know, update a list as we iterate through it. That's not really good to do. And in many cases, it's not even allowed. So, you know, rather than iterating over this, I'm going to actually create a temporary array of that. So I'm going to create a copy of it. And in Python, you can do that just like this, just pass that list into a list constructor and that'll create a copy for us. And then let's iterate over that copy instead, because we want to be updating the actual adjacency list, because that's what's going to be used in future recurring recursive calls. Okay, so we're we're visiting one of the neighbors. This is that neighbor. What we want to do is pop it from our adjacency list. So let's get the adjacency list of the source and then pop it. So we're popping the ith index and once we pop it, we also want to append it to our result. What we're saying is this is our current path. So we can add that V, that vertex to our result. And then what we want to do is run our DFS. I'm just going to, you know, leave that as a placeholder for now. And then if that DFS ends up returning true, then we can return true and then stop the function call because we're just looking for one path. And we will know that that path is the smallest lexical order one because we sorted our tickets, which I just realized I forgot to do. So let's actually do that up above. Before we build our adjacency list, let's not forget to actually sort our tickets. Uh, by default in Python, this will uh, sort the tickets based on the pair basically the logic that I summarized earlier in the video, but in some languages you might have to, you know, customize that source comparator. Okay, but jumping back to the logic down here. So this is the decision that we're making kind of in our backtracking. If we find that it returns true, that's great. But if it doesn't return true, then we have to backtrack this decision. So what, what we just did up above, what we did was we popped this. So instead of popping, let's insert it back into our uh, adjacency list. So at this index, we want to add V back to it. And we, you know, added this to the end of our result. So now let's actually pop from the end of our result to remove that, right? Basically reversing this decision that we make and then making a new decision on the next iteration of the loop. Now, of course, it's possible that, you know, down this decision, you know, down this recursive call, we don't find a solution. So in that case, we end up returning false from this function. But we know we are guaranteed at least one solution. So we know that when we actually call this DFS function, which I'm gonna do right now, call the DFS, and we know that the parameter we wanna pass in is JFK. That's always going to be our initial source node. So we pass in DFS, and then what we end up returning is gonna be our result. And of course, this time it wasn't really the logic. I misnamed one of the variables. I don't know why I named it time. It should be temp. Okay, now let's rerun this. And I left our placeholder DFS as it is. We forgot to pass in the variable. We know that the variable is V. V is the node that we're gonna be passing in. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, awesome. Now it actually works. You can see that it's pretty efficient on the left. This is a pretty challenging problem, but I think that this solution, uh, while it's difficult, it is also doable for a hard problem. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.